Welcome into Locked On Phillies, and tonight the Philadelphia Phillies start their biggest series of the season so far against the New York Mets. We'll break it all down on today's Locked On Phillies. You are Locked On Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is Locked On Phillies. I'm your host, Connor Thomas. Been talking Phil's baseball for years over on 97.5 The Fanatic on the radio. Now happy to be here with you as your host of Locked On Phillies. And I want to thank you for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. If it seems I'm a little bit more serious today than I normally am, that's because I am. This feels like, you know, it's a feeling you don't get with baseball very often because there's so many games it's very rare that you get to a point where a series means this much or a series feels like it means this much. And even for the standings, the funny thing is that this series with the Mets doesn't matter all that much with the standings. Well, it doesn't matter more than any other series because you're really not chasing down the Mets. I've been very candid about how I feel about the Philadelphia Phillies' chances to win the NL East and chase down the Mets, and I don't think it's a realistic goal. I do still think they're a playoff team. I do still think they'll compete against the Mets, but that's what this series is all about, right? How competitive will this Philadelphia Phillies team be against one of the best teams in baseball? The Mets have been a top-five team in baseball all year long. They're hot right now. You're seeing Scherzer. You're seeing DeGrom. You're seeing Bassett. Now, that's obviously the outlier of those three, but you're seeing the top arms on the New York Mets, and hey, they're seeing yours. Seeing Nola, they're seeing Wheeler, they're seeing Suarez. This is what a playoff series would look like. And hey, if the Philadelphia Phillies are for real, well, they'll show up and show it in Queens against the New York Mets at City Field. It's a huge series. And the reason I bring up, it's not often that baseball series feel like they mean this much, but it feels like a football game. When the Eagles are heading into like a big late season matchup, and I know they need it, I feel like I'm preparing to go to war. I, I legitimately do. I feel ready to run through a wall. And that is, those are the emotions pumping inside me right now as I get prepared for Philadelphia Phillies, New York Mets tonight. A little programming note, they're on Apple TV+. Plus, so Make sure you got that all set up. Go to the Philadelphia Phillies Twitter account. They tweeted out a link for exactly how to watch the game for free. So go ahead and check that out. It'll get you all squared away. It's a minor inconvenience. It's worth it for tonight's game. And, oh, by the way, if you're more focused on the Eagles preseason game than a Phillies potential playoff preview series against the New York Mets, yeah, I, I, get your priorities straight. This is the only thing that matters tonight in Philadelphia, and we're absolutely zoned in on the Philadelphia Phillies and New York Mets. It's a huge series. Not just in the standings, but like I said, a proof of concept. And I've used that expression multiple times this year, but this is like a microcosm of it. This team's been hot. They've been streaking. Seven of their last eight just ended a seven-game win streak. They've won 12 of their last 14, I think it is. They, they've been on an unbelievable tear. And so have the New York Mets. The Mets have been incredible. They just handled the Braves. They've been handling business. They're one of the best home teams in baseball. Uh, they're incredibly talented. They're feeling it right now. And these are two wrecking ball type teams that are on a collision course. And not only do they have these three games, but after a short stint with the Cincinnati Reds, the Phillies will see the Mets for four more games, and those will be down in South Philly. It's a huge, huge series starting tonight. And let's jump into who the Phillies are going to face on the mound because I already talked you through some of the pitching matchups. But tonight you have Ranger Suarez facing off against Max Scherzer. It's a 7-10 p.m. start and it's one that's going to captivate people across major league baseball the most exciting game you have going on tonight is new york and philadelphia and that speaks to how good the phillies have been lately and the position they've put themselves in looking at the pitching matchup ranger suarez so far this year is eight and five uh, that's really good considering how slow he started the year a 3680 ra a 137 whip in a hundred and a third innings pitched 100 hits even given up there. So the 37 walks is why it's a 1.37 whip. Literally, you can see how it breaks out even percentage-wise with the numbers. So 
a little bit of number uniqueness there. Now, he's only struck out 85 batters. His strikeouts have been down compared to last season when he was great, giving up 10 home runs. Max Scherzer, on the other hand, he's 8-2. and two. He's been dominant when available for the New York Mets. A 1980 ERA, a .9 whip, 95 and two-thirds innings pitched, only given up 69 hits. He's been as good as he's ever been. 120 strikeouts for the New York Mets in 95 and two-thirds innings and only 17 walks. We know what Max Scherzer is. He's unbelievable. He's an absolute monster, and you're going to have to deal with him tonight as the Phillies try and take game one from the New York Mets. And the Phillies lineup in this one, well, we'll talk about it, and we'll talk about the concern coming up in the next segment because the Kyle Schwarber injury is something needs to be discussed, and that deserves its own segment of how that affects the Phillies in this series. We'll get to that next on Locked On Phillies. But previewing the rest of this series, Aaron Nola will face off against Jacob deGrom on Saturday. That's a 7-10 game as well. And then, of course, the 140 game on Sunday. But Jacob deGrom this year has been good when he's been healthy. He's recently come back. And frankly, I don't care how healthy Jacob deGrom is. I don't care if he's newly back from the injured list. I don't care if he's on the back end of a long, long stretch where he's had a lot of usage. If he can take them out, which he's able to take them out tomorrow night, I don't care what type of shape he's in. He's nearly unhittable regardless. He's incredible. We know the talent. We don't have to dive too deep into how good Jacob DeGrom is because we've seen it time and time and time again. At any given time, either of the two first starting pitchers for the New York Mets in this series could be the best pitcher in baseball. But Aaron Nola has been really, really good himself. He's been dominant on the mound for the Philadelphia Phillies this year. Should have been an all-star. Uh, it was a little bit in trouble his last start against the Miami Marlins. And, or no, not the Miami Marlins. Two, three starts ago, I should say. Uh, when did he start in St. Against St. Louis was his last time he had issues. But no, uh, three starts ago against the Atlanta Braves in that series at Citizens Bank Park. He wasn't great. But he bounced back, and he had a uh, better game against the Pittsburgh Pirates after that and an even better game against the Washington Nationals in a 13-1 to win there. Uh, listen, Aaron Nola's been good this year. He's been absolutely dominant. He's Basically, if you get him three runs, the ball game's over. So that's an opportunity, but you're going to have to score those three runs off Jacob DeGrom. Finally, in the Sunday game, well, you're facing Chris Bassett. But you have Zach Wheeler going. That's the only game of the series where the Philadelphia Phillies have the pitching matchup advantage, in my opinion. So an opportunity to take advantage there on Sunday. But winning one out of three is not going to feel great for the Philadelphia Phillies. This is a series they go up there and intend to win. Despite missing Kyle Schwarber, despite Bryce Harper not being back, despite the Mets being a really talented team, good teams expect to beat other good teams. And that's how you become a great team. Here's the question that we're going to find out during this series. Are the Philadelphia Phillies a good baseball team who's good at beating lower-level opponents? Or are the Philadelphia Phillies a great baseball team? They can make some noise in October. I still, regardless of outcome of this series, think that they get in. But also, make no mistake, the fan base is starting to jump in on the Philadelphia Phillies. The win over the Marlins and Sandy Alcantara on Thursday night was awesome. Even though the series ender didn't go the Phillies away Friday, it's still another series when it was great. But that could turn if the Phillies go out and get worked by the Mets. It will look like fool's gold if they can't stand up to competition like New York. And, hey, we don't want that. We want the fan base absolutely in. I want you out there 100% committed to this team, being a playoff team, and being super talented. And for that, well, the players and this team has to hold up their end of the bargain. And they've got to go out and compete with the New York Mets. And, hey, if you lose two or three, but they're really, really competitive games, it does also matter how you lose games if you do. But go out, compete, compete to win, and find a way to take two out of three from the New York Mets and show us that this is a legitimate run that we can get excited about in Philadelphia for the first time in over a decade. It's a huge series. It's tough pitching matchups. The Phillies have an uphill battle. But – all that being said, I think they're ready for it. And I think we're going to see some elite level baseball up in Queens this weekend. So buckle up. It's going to be fun. And these are the type of opportunities that you earn by having a really good baseball team. The Phillies have earned this chance to, for this series to be big. Now 
go ahead and earn a series win to show that you can take advantage of those opportunities. It's awesome. But in the next segment, I'll tell you about one of the troubles that the Philadelphia Phillies are facing right now with Kyle Schwarber going down, what the lineup looks like tonight, and what that could mean for the remainder of the series because hey, there's going to be a new face at the top of the lineup. We know who it is now, and it's a real sink or swim moment. I'll explain next on Locked On Phillies. All right, I want to tell you a little bit about something that's just as serious. This is a no joke. Imagine this. You're hanging out with some friends, putting back a few drinks. A few becomes a few too many as the evening comes to an end and people start to head out. You, you think of calling for a ride, but nah, you live nearby. You can make it home. Okay, it's no big deal. What are the odds you get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up, you lose your license, and you lose your job, you total your car, you could kill someone. It's no joke. Everyone knows about the risks of drunk driving. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again, play it safe, and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or change someone else's forever. So drive sober or get pulled over. This ad paid for the National Highway Transit Safety Administration, NHTSA. Make sure we're smart. Listen, the Phillies could go out and they could sweep this weekend. You could be celebrating. I know I'm going to go out tonight in Center City, Philadelphia. I'm going to Uber both places. Don't be dumb. Don't make a dumb decision and drive drunk. We're better than that. We're smarter than that. There's enough resources out there in the world today. Be better. That's all I've got to say on that. So shout out to NHTSA for for that uh, ad read there. And uh, make the right choices. That's it. All right, let's talk about the lineup that the Philadelphia Phillies are trotting out for this series opener against the New York Mets because Kyle Schwarber went down in the series ender against the Miami Marlins. Now, he was able to walk off the field. He had to pull himself out of the ballgame. So it didn't look like it was overly serious, but it was troubling. And we found out post game from manager Rob Thompson that Schwarber has a mild calf strain. He's listed as day to day. Now, what does day to day mean? Only the team knows. He's not playing tonight. He's out of the lineup and unavailable. But if he plays, he could be available for tomorrow. He could be available for Sunday. We don't know. It doesn't sound major, and that's good news. But the bad news is you're heading into the biggest series of the season so far without the guy who's been your biggest power threat and one of the better hitters on your team. Also, the leadoff hitter, the guy who's the catalyst for this lineup, who gets everything going, who has the chance to lead the yard from the word go. Could you imagine Max Scherzer takes the mound tonight, plates a fastball on the first pitch, and Kyle Schwarber turns it around and sends it 450 to right field? What that would do for the team's confidence? Yeah, not an option. So it's a big loss. And while it does make the team a little bit better defensively, it certainly hurts the offense. Now, I'll tell you what, this is my point with all of this. The offense has kind of been struggling lately. I understand Sandy Alcantara is unbelievable, but they didn't look good against Sandy Alcantara. They get shut out in the series ender yesterday. It's And it just felt like a series against the Marlins. Even though the Phillies won two or three, the offense wasn't the same explosive offense that we saw against the Nationals, the Pirates, even the Braves at points in the series that they won versus the Atlanta Braves at home. So it's an opportunity for the Phillies to bounce back, but it's going to be tough to do it. And there's a little bit of worry in the back of my mind back here if you're watching on YouTube as I gestured to the back of my head, that the Phillies offense is slumping a little bit. They're playing bad teams, but they could be getting away with some stuff that they're not going to be able to against the New York Mets. And what doesn't help a potentially slumping offense is losing one of your best hitters. Here's how the Phillies are going to line up tonight. And there's some interesting stuff right off the top. Leading off in place of Kyle Schwarber is Bryson Stott. Stott is going to lead off tonight. He's going to be your guy that starts everything off against Max Scherzer and the New York Mets. Reese Hoskins batting second. Alec Bohm batting third, playing third. Jay Chirimito catching. Nick Castellanos in right. Derek Hall's going to DH. Gene Segura is playing second base. Brandon Marsh in center. Matt Veerling moves in the left to cover for Kyle Schwarber, who is injured. And the defense becomes better because of it. So that's a fringe benefit. Not that the Phillies are better off without Kyle Schwarber, but the defense should be better. So, hey, that's a, that's a slight silver lining. And then Ranger Suarez on the mound. Now, let's talk about young Bryson Stott, who will be leading off. And let's also look at what this lineup has done 
career against Max Scherzer. So we have an idea if there's a chance that this uh, kind of uh, weakened Phillies lineup, I guess we'll say, has a chance to beat Max Scherzer. Now, believe it or not, Bryson Stott, who's leading off, is three for four career against Max Scherzer. He was only facing him once, and he went three for four in that game with two RBIs, a 750 average. The Phillies lost that game. I remember it well, but the uh, Stott was good. Now, that's where the fun ends. Reese Hoskins, who's batting two, one for 26, a 038 career average against Max Scherzer with 14 strikeouts. Alec Bohm, five for 15. Not bad, and he's been streaking, but five strikeouts as well. So striking out every, every three times based on his number of at-bats there. JT Romito, seven for 58, a 121 average. Nick Castellanos, two for 17, a 118 average. Gene Segura is 12 for 33 for a 364 average. He sees him well. So look for Gene to potentially have a big night. But it seems that actually like Stott in a very, very small sample size has seen Max Scherzer well in his young career. But it is a young career. Bryce has thought so far this year is batting 211 with seven home runs, 37 RBIs, and a 604 OPS. It's not great, but for a rookie, it's not terrible. He's got to figure stuff out. He's been really good with the glove at shortstop or second, wherever he is. He's a talented player who got an opportunity to play, and he's working through some stuff. You could see the approach is considerably better than when he first came up and made the opening day start. The first Phillies number one, well, one overall pick, not one overall, sorry, first round pick, the first ever first round pick by the Phillies to make his debut on opening day in the history of the franchise. So a good moment there, a highly touted prospect, and his approach has been getting better. But going from batting seventh or batting eighth against the Pittsburgh Pirates or Miami Marlins or Washington Nationals, yeah, that's a totally different shift when then all of a sudden Rob Thompson comes in and tells you, hey, kid. You're batting leadoff against Max Scherzer in the biggest series the Philadelphia Phillies have had so far this season. It's a really big spot for Stott. And I've had this conversation a couple times with some people at 97.5 The Fanatic and a couple other people in passing around baseball, a couple people in the press box. And there is a conversation to be had that says Bryson Stott is the leadoff hitter of the future for this team. His approach is slight power, but more of his ability to hit the ball to all fields. And he sees the plate pretty well comparatively and it shows that he has the chance to really improve that i think he has the makings of a leadoff hitter at the major league level and he could be a really really good one now he's not there yet clearly batting 211 and kyle schwarber is the guy that i think is still best in that spot for the team this season but this isn't a totally uncharacteristic spot for bryson stock it's just tough circumstances it's tough to tell a kid who's batting 211 who's uh, young and has <laughs> very minor at bats at the major league level. He's got 266 career at bats at the major league level. Okay. That's not exactly a plethora of experience. I guess a wealth of experience would be the better word. And here's what you're basically doing. You're throwing the kid into the deep end and it's not out of a choice. It's out of necessity. But he's going into the deep end, and you're going to see if he can sink or swim as a leadoff hitter this series against some of the best pitchers in baseball. He's not great against lefties, but good news, uh, you got the opportunity to take advantage of a couple righties early. And I say take advantage of a couple of righties. Well, they're, they're damn good right-handed pitchers. But this is a great opportunity for Bryson Stott, and hopefully the kid takes advantage. He's the biggest question mark in this series. If he can be really good at the leadoff spot, he could really energize this Philadelphia Phillies lineup. And not only that, but it can give you a lot of hope for the future. Because I've told you, I don't think this is an all-in season for the Philadelphia Phillies, but this is one that's a proof of concept year. We're making it into the playoffs, see how competitive you are, come back, retool, uh, and everything for next year, fill out a couple positions of need, and then go at it. Well, if Bryson Stott looks really, really good in this type of a spot, you can feel awesome about next year heading in with him as the second baseman or shortstop of this team, depending on what you do with Gene Segura. So, yeah, big series for Bryson, big series for the Phillies, big opportunity for a kid getting to bat lead off in a really big spot in a really big series. So that's where I'm going to be watching. But we'll be watching the team in general as they try and take that lineup and beat one of the best pitchers in baseball and then go ahead and do it again tomorrow night. So 
we'll see how they all do. That's uh, that's the preview of the Mets series, though. It's going to be an absolute banger of a series. And coming up next, well, I've got a quick off-the-pole question for you since it is Friday. We're going to jump in on that, and I'm going to ask you a question about this Mets series. And I'll put it out before game time tonight so that we'll see what your prediction is. I'll discuss more next on the final segment of Locked on Phillies. All right, we got to make sure you're staying healthy out there. Can't have any issues with your liver. And uh, you know that the key to sustainable weight loss is through your liver? The liver is the body's metabolic furnace, which means it's responsible for flushing out harmful toxins and igniting your fat-burning meta- uh, metabolism. Basically, where the fat-burning starts is with the liver kicking out all the bad stuff out of your system. And it's easy now to rejuvenate your liver health and reignite your metabolism thanks to Liver Health Formula by Pure Health Research. Liver Health Formula contains eight liver-boosting super nutrients like turmeric, beet, artichoke extract, all the good stuff that wakes up a sluggish liver. It's great for you. And you can get a free bottle of Curb Fit with your order. That's a great deal that we're cutting you today because Liver Health Formula makes it easier to maintain a healthy body weight. And we also want to get you Curb Fit as a safe and all-natural appetite suppressant, making it easy to say no to naughty foods. It's the perfect complement to Liver Health Formula. So go to GetLiverHealth.com slash MLB to learn more. Again, that's GetLiverHealth.com slash MLB to try Liver Health Formula completely risk-free and claim your free bottle of Curb Fit with your order. Again, that's go to GetLiverHealth.com slash MLB now to get started. All right, it's time for Off the Poll. That's the segment we always do on Fridays where we ask a poll question, we respond to it. I'll get back to this one on Monday. We'll have a bonus episode coming out tomorrow, Saturday, because of how big of a series this is. I want to react to tonight's game. I want to talk about the weekend games, get into some stuff there because, man, this is exciting stuff to talk about for the Philadelphia Phillies. But if you're not familiar with Off the Poll, it's a segment where we put out the poll question. I, I mention it here. I tell you what the question is. We post it on our Twitter account at LO underscore Phillies. I retweet it from at Connor Thomas 975, which is my personal account. And we get everything all squared away there. Your responses are then read on Monday's episode, and I'll give you my thoughts there. Now, this is one that talks about the Mets series with the Philadelphia Phillies. And I could do something easy where it's like, how many games do you expect the Phillies to win against the New York Mets? And yeah, that's all well and good. But I want to dive a little bit deeper. Anyone could do that. I want to know how this affects your view of the Philadelphia Phillies as a whole. Could you be completely out on the Philadelphia Phillies as a result of this Mets-Phillies series? That's the question I want to know. If the Phillies get swept, are you completely out on this team? you saying it's fool's gold between the Phillies and what they did with the Pittsburgh Pirates and Nationals and Marlins? Are you saying that all is irrelevant because of this series? Or do you see it as just another three-game set? We'll see what they are in September and October. And then judge this team. I don't know. I'm interested to see how much stock the fan base is putting into this series because to me it's a huge one. But I'll tell you on Monday just how big I actually think it is. So we will discuss the results on Monday, but I'll tweet it out again. How much stock are you putting into this phillies Met series? Could you be completely out if the Phillies get swept? That's the question. It'll be out at LO underscore Phillies. And I look forward to hearing from you about that and seeing how – I don't even want to say reactionary because this is a really big series, but what the reaction to this series in a vacuum will be. So we'll discuss that on Monday's episode. But again, look for another bonus episode coming out tomorrow, a rare weekend edition of Locked On Phillies because of how big this series is. So I'll be happy to talk to you then. But that's all for today's episode. I want to thank you for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Now check out Locked On MLB, Paul Francis Sullivan. Sully, he covers baseball around the entirety of Major League Baseball, not just the Phillies, not just one specific team, but all the big storylines. He does a great job. Check it out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Again, that's Locked On MLB with Sully, Paul Francis Sullivan. That's all the time I've got for you. I'm going to go get geared up and ready for war. Put my war paint on and everything. Settle down in front of my laptop because Apple TV tonight. Remember, just go to the Phillies main Twitter account to figure out how to watch. But settle in, get a beverage ready, and get ready for the Philadelphia Phillies to take on the New York Mets in one of the biggest games that we've seen in the past couple of years for the Philadelphia Phillies. And there will be bigger games this year. There will be other opportunities. But up until this point, Well, this is about as big as it gets for the 2022 Phillies. I'm ready. Hope you are too. And I'll talk to you again tomorrow 
on Locked on Phillies.